start with you. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, was salat, was salam ala rasulillah. Today is the 17th of Shawwal, 1441, and we're in the book, Sifat al Salat al Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in a takbir ila taslim ka'anna kataraha. And we're on this section, the obligation of the first tashahud and the validity of supplication in it. He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, would recite the tahiyya after every two raqahs. The first thing he would say in the sitting would be, at tahiyyatu lillah. All compliments be to Allah. When he forgot to perform the tashahud after the first two rak'ahs, he would prostrate twice for, for, for forgetfulness. He used to order them to perform tashahud, saying, When he sits after every two rak'ahs, then say, At Then each of you should select the supplication he likes best and supplicate Allah, mighty and sublime, with it. In another version, say at in every sitting, and he also ordered the one who prayed badly to do so, as has been mentioned. He sallallahu alayhi wasallam would teach them the tashahud, the way he taught them the surahs of the Quran, and the sunnah is to say it quietly. Indeed, all praises you to Allah and my peace and blessings be upon his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. In Arabic, wujub at tashahud that is the obligation of the tashahud, and he says al awwal, and that is the first one. And the permissibility or the legalization of making dua in it. So here, there's two things that the Sheikh al Albani makes a subtitle, which is his decision of something which is controversial. Controversial issue number one, that some of the scholars deem this tashahud not to be compulsory. This first tashahud. And number two is that some of the scholars deem that there is no dua in the first tashahud. It's only at tahiyyatu lillah, and there is even, there's no salah al-Ibrahim in it. So the title itself, is what the Sheikh al-Albani had arrived as a conclusion. Then he puts the proofs which would support what he says. So he says that the Prophet Sallam, he used to recite in every two raka'ah, that means in the tashahud, at tahiyyat. So every two raka'ah, as we said, this is the first tashahud. It's not the two raka'ah of the Fajr. This is the first two raka'ah of a salah that has got more than two raka'ah. And he used to, the first thing to say that when he sits at the hiyatu lillah, to the continuation. Now, what is the proof that is the Sheikh al-Albani presents here and other scholars to say that it is compulsory that this is the al-awwal? First of all, just before I make sure that you understand, it is not just the Sheikh al-Albani who makes it compulsory, but we have a layth and we have also Ishaq and Nura Hawaii. And we have also a, the famous narration of Imam Ahmed. He's got two narrations from him. One, he says it is compulsory. And also, it's one of the sayings of Imam Shafi'i. And it's also one of the narrations of Imam Abu Hanifa, where they say it is compulsory. With others, they don't say it's compulsory. And Shafi'i, uh, as well, he's got two sayings, where Imam al Nawi supports the saying where it says it is not compulsory. What is the proof for it is compulsory? Uh, and what is the proof for those scholars who say this is not compulsory? So we could discuss both. The proof that it is compulsory, that is number one, that the Prophet وسلم, he said in the hadith, which has been recited by our brother here, he said, fi kulli at Say in every time that you sit down, at tahiyyat. So that's tashahud, a command, qulu. And when we say that there is a command, then it is a command will not be taken away from its being obligatory unless there is a reason, and there is no reason here, to take it away from being as a command. So if there's a reason to say it's not a command, there is a, 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 like for example, it's a, 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 an explanation that says it's not a command, yes, but we say, 
كل أمر يفيد الوجود. That's the principle. All commands of the Prophet it entails compulsion. It's compulsory. So it's a command, but not every command is compulsory. That's true, but it's a every unless. So the, the principle it says the principle unless there is a sarif. So if there is a command of the Prophet of Allah. It's compulsory, but why it's not compulsory? Maybe there is sarif. Sarif means a saying that makes it. It is not compulsory. For example, tamad madu min al laban, fa inna lahu dasma. Make gargling from laban. Laban is the yogurt or the milk. So when you drink milk before the prayer, you make madmada. So even if you are an udu, it says you must make madmada. Is this compulsory? Well, lots of people drink milk and go to the prayer. Am I sinned? But he said, فَإِنَّ لَهُ دَسَمَ Verily, it's got a cream. A cream of that uh, milk that sticks to the tongue. And we don't want you to be in the prayer doing like this. Because of this explanation, it took away the compulsory of making that wudu, uh, that madmada, which is the gargling or the rinsing of the mouth when you drink milk. It is actually, it is uh, it becomes like <clears throat> a, a, a help for you, which is that it is not uh, compulsory it's like the wudu, but it is because of this dasam. Most some of them they don't have the dasam that that creamy stuff, the sticky stuff in it. Okay, but if you had, make sure that the milk or any any other food to take it away from your mouth, so you could be completely in the prayer. And here we find, uh, we want to say a story that happened to a Sheikh Al Albani student who was just a general layman. Where he, the students of his, used to work in a company where the head of the company, where his boss is Tahriri. Tahriri means HT. You know the HT. The ones who always the talk about Khalifa, 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 but they do nothing. Took a look at themselves, they really apply the sunnah of the props. They say the sunnah is not really, not, no time for it now. Those tahriri at that time, there were plenty of them because it was close to their sheikh. That sheikh of theirs, Taqiyuddin, uh, the, the, the sheikh of theirs, sorry, that he was at that time, even in the time of the sheikh al Albani. So he's got lots of followers. So he told. This person who comes to the Sheikh Al Albani, when he told him something, and he said to him, you know, let go of the beard. He had, didn't have beard. And by the way, the Hizbut Tahrir, some of them don't have beards. Even the high people, the high Raki, they don't have beards. He said to him, you know, let go of the beard. He said to him, well, it's, it's not compulsory. The Hariri guy, he said. So this guy said, well, the Prophet was said, let go of the beard. So the Tahriri person said, not every command, this is something they learn it all the time, not every command. It entails it is compulsory. So if the Prophet said, he said, let go of your beard, it doesn't mean it's compulsory. Now, he came to the Sheikh al Albani, this layman, student of Sheikh al Albani. And he's a layman, he's not really a big student, or not even a small student. Ask him for help. So the Sheikh now is not going to, you know, sit, make him to sit down for days and teach him the principles, al Qawaid al Fiqhiyya, and the principles of Fiqh. And the, the, the commands, it entails compulsory. It command of the Prophet, it entails is compulsory, unless there is a sarif. And this is too much for him to learn. But he told him something that would make it easy for him to refute the argument of this, uh, of this Tahriri person. Remember, the Tahriri says, not every command means compulsory. And that is why he refuted the argumentation, the hadith of that guy when he said to him, Prophet said, let go of your beard. It's a command. So not every command means compulsory. So he took the advice of Sheikh al Albani and he went to the company. The head of the company is calling him. His name is Muhammad, by the way. Muhammad. It's not, it's not coming. Maybe he didn't, see, didn't hear him. So he said, Muhammad. And he could see him there. Muhammad, come here. Muhammad, come here. Three or four times. And then he went to him and he just shook him. Why are you not listening to me? He said, to him, Well, sorry, not every command is compulsory. He just said that. <laughs> so Sheikh al Albani told him that every time he calls you, punish means in Arabic, um, don't pay attention. 
And then until he's really enraged, and he says, why are you not listening? Said, well, you're calling me, but I didn't know that it was a command for me to come because not every command is compulsory. This is how he refuted the argument in a simple way of logic. So the Prophet said, and every time you sit down, at tahiyyat. Okay? And also, this command came in the hadith that our brother recited, which he had prayed badly. So, the one who prayed badly, we said, if you remember, those commands, which is in that hadith, is to be what? Commands. So, even it is in, in the hadith, which is the main hadith of ours. At the hadith of Al Musi Salata means the one who prayed badly. The one who came to the Masjid of the Prophet وسلم, and he prayed quickly. And the Prophet of Allah, when he came to him, he said, Salamu alaykum, salam, salam, go back and you pray, or you haven't prayed. Three times he done that, and then he said, Messenger of Allah, I know nothing, so teach me. So the Prophet of Allah gave him the obligations and also the pillars in that prayer, in that hadith of his. He said, When you want to make the prayer, so and so, do this. So he told the, he told the Prophet, oh, Teach me. So the Prophet of Allah taught him. So that is the main hadith. So he said, even the hadith of the one who prayed badly contains this command. But then he says, Sheikh al-Albani, it's amazing that Imam al-Nawawi, rahimahullah, he did not make it compulsory. And his reasoning for that, that it, it, it did not come in the hadith of the one who prayed badly. It's not he's made because of this. Because maybe he made a mistake, Imam al-Nawawi, he didn't see it. So the Sheikh al-Bani said, it is, it is, clearly it is in the hadith, okay, despite it is already there, it is in the one who prayed badly. But this is not what the Sheikh al-Bani is uh, basically not happy with the decision of Imam al -Nawi. He says that, then, when we talk about the second tashahud, which is compulsory with the consensus of all scholars, Imam al is reasoning for it, that it is compulsory, that basically it is compulsory because it came from other hadiths, do it, do it. Yet, it is not mentioned, the second tashahud, in the hadith of the one who prayed badly. So why didn't you, Imam Nawawi, use the same logic of yours to say that, well, it's not compulsory because it was not mentioned in the hadith of the one who prayed badly. That shows you sometimes, the Imam Nawawi, rahmatullahi because of the madhab, because of the Imam Shafi saying, sometimes he would twist the hadith in order to go ahead. ahead. This is very, very few occasions, but it happens, and unfortunately, that is to suit the madhab, just to go with the madhab. But a number of occasions, well, he did not go with the madhab, rahmatullahi alayhi. Right, so this is at what Sheikh al-Albani said, and he's not happy. Why are you not using the same logic that just like you said, that the shahud al-awsat is, uh, is not compulsory because it's not being mentioned in the hadith which is being played badly, which is mentioned, but according to him, it's not mentioned. He didn't find it. Whereas he did not, you see, same thing, same principle for the second tashahud. He should have said it's not compulsory as well. Uh, anyway, so we say here there is no difference between the first tashahud and the second tashahud. <coughs> Both of them. Are compulsory. Actually, there is a merit for the first tashahud which is not in the second tashahud. What is that merit which has been mentioned in the hadith of the one who prayed badly, whereas the second tashahud was not mentioned? To say that we are not saying that the only obligatory is the, in the hadith which is he prayed badly, the one who prayed badly. No, there is obligations which he mentioned in other hadith other than the hadith of the one who prayed badly. What are the proofs for those who said it's not obligatory? As I said, they said, number one, it's not mentioned in the hadith according to Imam Nawi, but as I said, it's been mentioned. And also, <coughs> they said that there is sujood sahu for it, because the Prophet he said, if you forgot, did not do it, and you got up, okay, then go, go back to it. Because if it was compulsory, then you should go back to it. And also they said that if you went, don't go back to it, and then you make sujood sahu. So sujood sahu, that means it is not compulsory. That refutation of this is very simple. First of all, the hadith 
that tells us why he's not coming back is the hadith of Al-Mughira. Because the hadith of Al-Mughira said, if, Prophet Salim said, if you are not completely standing up, then you sit down. That's makes it compulsory. Okay? It's not compulsory. So let's say, for example, raising up the hands for getting up after, because you could raise the hand as well. If you did not raise up the hand and you got up, you just said Allahu Akbar without raising the hand. Nobody says compulsory. That's in Takbirat al Haram, but not in this. So to raise up the hand, to say Allahu Akbar, but to raise up the hands. So who says that going from the first rakah to the second rakah to raise up the hands is compulsory? Okay, it is not, it's not compulsory. So if we did not, do we say to you, go back to do it? No, we don't. So basically, the saying of the Prophet of Allah, if you're not straight, st fully standing up, go back and do tashahud. And then he says that if you are fully up, don't go back. It doesn't mean it's not compulsory. But it means because you are into the compulsory, which is not allowed to go away from it, you can't go back to this compulsory. And this compulsory is uh, for you to do the compensation of that by making two sajda. Second refutation that who says that the sujood itself only fulfills or compensates for something which is not obligatory? That's not correct. So if, for example, you forgot the rukur, what do you do? You remember? You go to the rukur again. And you do what? Sujood? Sahu. So we say two sajda of sahu is for the compulsory as well. Even if the person did not recite, uh, let's say, for example, uh, let's say something which is obligatory, where it is allowed for you to go ahead. Like, for example, takbirat al ihram, and after that, takbirat al ruku'ah. You said, Allahu Akbar. You did not raise up your hands. And that's compulsory. We say that you make sujood sahu for that, but it doesn't mean if you make sujood sahu, it is not compulsory. So, this is the two refutations for that. We say it is compulsory. And if you left it deliberately, uh, then you are sinned. You are sinned because it is compulsory. Now here, also the hadith says, وَكَانَ إِذَا نَسِيَا When he forgets it, he would make sujood al sahu This is an indication that the Prophet of Allah is to all the time do the first tashahud. And that's what Ibn Qayyim had depended upon in his Al-Hadi Al-Nabawi. He said, that is, he used to, the Prophet of Allah, make the shahud all the time. First the shahud. Then he says here, قال, Let him choose the dua which is recommended for him. This is the footnote there for this, which is, it says, Al-Nasai, Ahmad, Al-Tabarani, and then after that, he says, I say, Fadal Abdul. Abdullah, the footnote where it says, footnote where the Sheikh says, this indicates. Okay, yes, I see it. No. The literal meaning of the hadith is evidence for the validity of supplication in every tashahud, even the one not adjacent to the taslim. And this is the view of Ibn Hazm, Rahimahullah. Meaning that even if this tahiyyat, this tashahud is not followed by salutation, okay, that means the middle tashahud, then this tashahud you make dua. Because he says the Prophet of Allah, فَلْيَدْعُوا اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلْ Let him choose a dua that he's familiar with, he's happy with, and let him call Allah Azza wa Jal with it. So in the middle tashahud, there is the same thing, the duas. But the dua, regarding seeking refuge from the four, it is compulsory in the second tashahud. It's not compulsory in the first tashahud. But in terms of making dua, you make dua as much as, so your middle tashahud is in time-wise equal to your second tashahud. So your first tashahud in time-wise, in dua-wise, is similar to the second one. No, no difference. Why is that we find that some people make it quick? And that's maybe the majority of the people. This is based upon a hadith, which is not authentic. Narrated by Muslim Imam Ahmad, and the Prophet ﷺ, whenever he sits, 
in the first tashahud, ka'annahu ala ribf, meaning is like sitting on a burning coal. So that means he quickly to get up. And that is not authentic. Whereas we find the authentic is this hadith, hadith Aisha radiallahu anha, which he had explained the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa prayer of the witr, in which he prayed in this witr, a prayer of seven raka and a prayer of nine raka. In the seven and the nine rakahs, he paid it as follows. He made tashahud in the sixth and he made the tashahud in the seventh. And when he prayed nine raka, he prayed, made tashahud in the eighth, he made tashahud in the ninth. So when he makes two tashahud here, we have the first and the second. In the first and the second, Aisha, she said, the Prophet ﷺ, he made the same dua he made in the second. Because of this, makes it illegal, makes it okay, permissible, legislated, that is to make the dua in the first tashahud, just to make it in the second tashahud. This hadith, which our brother, he read the uh, commentary about it, which is the hadith that the Prophet ﷺ, he said, let him choose the dua, which is, uh, uh, sort of lovable to him, dearer to him, and let him call upon Allah Azza wa with it. This is from the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, where he said, Kunna la nadri. We used to say, we used to know, not to know what do we say in the tashahud, except that we make tasbih, takbir, tahmid of our Lord. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was taught the eloquent speech, jawami al kalim, fawatiha al khayr the good du'as of that contains a lot of good and also the ending of it so what, what, what is the consequences of it he was taught the du'a that contains a lot of things in it so he said to us if you sit down in every first rak'ah means the first tashahud then say at tahiyyat then you say let you choose the du'a which is highly recommended for you uh, or recommended for you the one you like and let you call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with it. طيب. Then he says at the end, Prophet sallallahu he used to teach us the tashahud, like he used to teach us the surah from the Quran. We're going to express that as well, inshallah, in hadith Abdullah Mas'ud in a minute. It's very important that the Prophet of Allah, he used to make sure that they pay attention to the tashahud. This tashahud is very important. That he taught them this tashahud just like he teach them the Quran. That means words, not to miss any word. So every word counts. Every letter counts. You have to do it according to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then also Al-Imam al uh, sorry, then also he said, قَالْ وَالسُنَّةُ إِخْفَاءُ And the sunnah is to hide it. That means to not to say it loudly. Al-Imam al nawi Rahmatullah, he said that Al-Ulama the scholars had consensus that you see it say it silently, not loudly, like a loud recitation. In the two tashahud, whether it's the middle or the end, at the end, this is the first or the second. And it is disliked to say this tashahud openly, loudly. And they have used this hadith, which is hadith Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, where he said it is from the sunnah to say the dua of the tashahud, not loud just with your lips moving. طيب. So here we find that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, if you are making, if you forgot the shahud, if you are not fully up, then sit down and no such the suhud, sujood sahu. If you're fully up, don't sit, continue and make two sajda. The two sajda, best things to do them before salutation. What is the proof for this? Hadith in Sayyidina Muslim, on the authority of Abdullah ibn Muhayna radiallahu an, he said that the Prophet sallam, he made a prayer for us to raka'ah, then he stus, in the, sorry, he made a prayer for us, he prayed for us, and he led us in a prayer, and in the middle tashahud, the first to raka'ah, he stood up without making tashahud, and the people stood up with him. When he finished his prayer, he made takbir, then he made sujood, to sajda, while he was sitting, before salutation, then he made salutation. So after he finished his tashahud and everything, he made two sajda, Allahu Akbar, sajad, and then he made salutation. Right. 
Also, hadith, Ziyad ibn Ilaqa, radiyallahu anhu. Ziyad ibn Ilaqa, rahimahullah, he said, Al-Mughirat ibn Shu'ba, radiyallahu anhu, he had led us in a prayer. When he prayed to Raqqa, he stood, and he did not sit. So the people made tasbih for him, to remind him. The ones behind him, they made tasbih for him. So he made a gesture for them. فَأَشَارَ إِلَيْهِمْ Stand up. So he's like he's praying. And made tashahud, forgot, stood up completely. So the people sat down there and sitting down, they're saying, Subhanallah. So he gave a gesture while he is Imam to get up like this. Follow me. So they got up. When he finished the prayer and he made salutation, he made the two sajda, of course, while he was sitting, and then he made the salutation, then he said, This is the way how the Prophet performed the Sujood Sahu. Then he said, The Prophet of Allah said, If one of you to pray, and then he stood up from the tashahud, the first one, if he was not a if he was not completely standing up, then let him sit, and there is no such su sajda on him. But if he was to stand up completely, then let him complete his prayer, then let him make two sajda while he is sitting. Third hadith. Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas, radiyallahu anhu. This is in Musadraq al-Hakim, which is sahih as well, authentic. That he himself stood up in the first two rakah without making tashahud. So they made tasbih for him. Because he was completely up, so they followed him. Then he made two sajda of the sahu. And after he left and he finished, he said, did you think that I would have sat it, because you said to me, Subhanallah, did you think I would have, you know, I would have listened to you to sit when you said to me, Subhanallah, for verily I done what I have seen the Prophet Sallam was doing. So I'm not going to sit. So if you stood up, then complete. Now the people behind you, regardless whether they, they saw you standing up completely or not completely, they have to say Subhanallah. The reason behind this is that your subhanallah could be triggered just before he's standing up fully so you could sit down. Or even if he stood up, your subhanallah will tell him that he made a mistake. Okay? So he made a mistake. But if he said subhanallah and he stood up, you're not allowed to say subhanallah again. He's telling him to sit down. Even while he's standing up, he said, subhanallah, but still standing up, still don't say subhanallah, because maybe he's not really realizing what you're saying subhanallah, because he thinks it's in the first rakah. He thinks it's in the third rakah, not the, not the second. Okay? So don't, you just say subhanallah, just to tell him that you have made a mistake. So at the end of the prayer, he will make sujood as sah But if he makes sujood as sah by the way, after salutation, let's say that he re did not realize making a mistake, did not realize that he had uh, forgotten the tashahud, you just tell him that you forgot the shahud. You say Allahu Akbar while he's sitting. And then everybody will make sujood sahur, two sajda with it. What do you say in the sujood sahur? There is no supplication, which is that other than the, that when we know, subhana rabbi al-a'la. And the same thing, Allahu Akbar, in between the sajdas. Allahu Akbar for sujood, Allahu Akbar to get up. Second sajda, the same thing. Wallahu a'la. Fine. I think I believe, alhamdulillah, we have covered everything regarding this session. Let's go to the siyag at shahud Fadl. The manner of tashahud. He taught several ways of the of tashahud. Number one, the tashahud of Ibn Mas'ud, who said, "The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught me the tashahud with my palm between his palms, the way he taught me the surahs of the Quran." Okay, so we continue. So we're going to have now number of siyah, number of ways of saying the tashahud. They differ slightly. And the person is encouraged to do one this time and that one another time. You could alternate. This is what we call ikhtilaf al This is the difference of dua, but this is to choose a type. It is not ikhtilaf that is will make you to uh, basically oppose one another, which is the ikhtilaf that is criticized. Here, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, radiyallahu an, whom the Prophet he said, if Abdullah Musalim told you something, then believe him. Sadiqu. 
And also, Abdullah Masood here is narrating not from himself, from the Prophet. He said, the Prophet of Allah taught me the tashahud, just like he taught me the Surah of the Quran. But he mentioned something here. وَكَفِّي بَيْنَ كَفَّي My hand is in between two hands. So, my hand was held by the two hands of the Prophet So the hands of Abdullah Mas'ud is squeezed, is squeezed, squeezed between the hands of the Prophet, between the palms of the Prophet. So, and I don't know if you know that some of the people, they've got this habit when they shake the hand of somebody else. You say, Salaamu Alaikum, he gets with two hands holding the hand of yours. That's why I mentioned this to understand the Sunnah of this. First of all, this, when he held this hand of his, Prophet does not do that on every occasion. And he's not making salam to him. No. This is like you're grabbing somebody's hand to grab his attention. Like Umar ibn Mas'ud al-Thaqafi, when he was talking to the Prophet of Allah before he embraced Islam, and he was negotiating with the Prophet of Allah, he was touching his beard. Allah, he was trying to touch the beard of the Prophet. It's like, come on, go ahead with him asking you, accept this treaty. Okay? And Al-Mughir ibn Shu'bah, was behind him, which is his nephew. He was, he was masked, and he was like, Take your hand off. That means because you're filthy, you're, you're not clean, you're not Muslim. Take your hands off from the beard of the Prophet of Allah. When he's looking at him, he's masked man, he can't say anything. He doesn't know him. He didn't know that he was actually, he's his uncle. He is his uncle. But he's a kafir in that moment, he's a Muslim. So the gesture of touching the beard of somebody, that means you are trying to beg him to accept. Same thing here, the gesture of holding the hands of somebody is like trying to bring his attention and to say to him, this is what I'm teaching you is important. But to make this is a sunnah when you, you know, when you, um, when you uh, meet somebody, that's a bid'ah. It's not a sunnah. So you, every time you find somebody, you know, what's the shikil hand? Brother, why? Prophet Wasallam, he did not teach us this. And if you are using this, this is for Prophet Allah, done it, so to teach him a dua. So if somebody is there to me and held my hand, okay, I, I'll say to you, what are you going to teach me? Something? Prophet of Allah, in the hadith, he said, when a person meets a person, So this is the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. The Muslim, the Muslim person, if he had met his brother, the Muslim, قال فأخذ بيده. He took his hand with one hand, not took his hand with two hands. For verily, their sins will be dropping, shedding, just like the tree would shed its leaves during the autumn season. So to show, to show, to, to see, to say that this is a sunnah every time you're saying salam to get the two hands, that is not from the sunnah. It is not from the sunnah. And actually, it is not supported even by the Arabic language. When he says that he's to teach me this, like he taught me the Quran, that means it is important. It is that he is making it sure that you are to have to memorize it. Just like the Prophet of Allah taught Al-Bara ibn Azab, the supplication when you go to sleep. Huh? So this dua, he taught it to Al-Bara word for word. And this is the same thing again. Word for word, you learn it. This is tashahud. Say the tashahud, please. Fadr. At-tahiyyatu lillah, wassalawat, wattayyibat. Wassalawat. Salawat is different. Sad, sad. Wassalawat. At-tahiyyatu lillah, wassalawat, wattayyibat. Assalamu alayna. السلام عليك أيها النبي ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله All compliments, prayers and pure words are due to Allah Peace be upon you, O Prophet and also the mercy of Allah and his blessings Peace be on us and on the righteous slaves of Allah I bear witness that none has a right to be worshipped except Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his slave and the messenger. Do you have footnotes and everything here? Yes, there is. Okay, let's start with one by one. What's salawat? Now. You missed the previous one. At, at, um, Go on. At tahiyat. Yeah, at tahiyat. Sorry. 
Tahiyat means all words which imply peace, sovereignty, and eternity are due so to Allah. So peace, sovereignty, and eternity, and this is for Allah Azza wa Tahiyat, as salawat. All supplications which are used to glorify the majesty of Allah, for He is fully entitled to them, and none but Him is worthy of them. Uh, and also other interpretation has been said. If you want to know more, go to Fath al-Bari and Mirqat al-Mafatih and there are lots of meanings there regarding what is the meaning at tahiyatu lillahi wa salawatu at tayyibat So there's more meanings to that. But this is what is mentioned here. Is what uh, al-Nihaya Ibn Afir, what he had said. Now, number two. at tayyibat All good and pure words suitable for praising Allah. Not those ones incompatible with this all, 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 as well. all good All good and pure words Correct. Suitable for praising Allah Not those ones com incompatible With his attributes With which kings were greeted uh, So the normal king When they are greeted, you know, treated, greeted uh, Or to be greeted by others It's not the same thing That when you are doing that To the Almighty Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala It has to be uh, Sorry uh, again, you know when the people when they talk to the kings, they talk to him by absolving him and your majesty and all of those. All of those words are suitable to the Almighty Subhanahu wa Taala, and you cannot use any word that which is not be suitable to him. So when the kings greet one another, each other they greet each other with what with sovereignty and all of this. Allah is more deserved to have these things, which is suitable to his majesty and his attributes. Now, number three. As -salam, As -salam. Yeah. meaning seeking of refuge with Allah and being strengthened by him. Since As-Salam, peace, is actually a name of Allah. Hence, the greeting effectively means Allah be a watcher and safeguard over you. So, Similarly, ha hafil wa kafil of a watcher and Kafil, a guarantor. Naam. Similarly? Similarly, it is said, Allahu ma'ak. Allah ma'ak. Allah, ma Allah ma'ak means Allah be with you. That is what? I.e. in his safeguarding, help and favor. So, safeguarding, help and favor. Correct. Correct. Now we go to wa barakatuh. A term for all the good continuously emanating from Allah. Right. And now this is Hadith, which is in Sahih Bukhari Muslim, and we have to add this is the most authentic a hadith, a hadith in the a hadith of Tashahud, which is in Sahih Bukhari and Muslim. And the narrators from Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, they did not differ regarding the wordings of it. Whereas the other hadith, we have the narrators, they differ, they added a word or different word. It, and, uh, uh, and this hadith, also the strongest amongst the hadith of tashahud because he took it from the mouth of the prophet because he said he put his hand in my hand with squeezed between his two hands and he taught me this hadith like he teaches me the quran so he took it directly from the prophet of allah talqeen talqeen means say this say at tahiyat he says tahiyat he's repeating behind the prophet and it came from more than 20 narrate more than 20 Riwaya, narrations. You know, the narration comes from one path and one route. 20 tariq of this, or this hadith. Tay. Here he has a, no, a note here. He says, and Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he said, please can you read the notes after Bukhari and Muslim? There's a note here. There's um, one part I missed from the next part. So um, this was while he was among us, but after he was taken, we would say, Assalamu ala nabi. That's what that's what I just said. This is after the Bukhari, Muslim was Siraj Abu Ya'la, and it's being narrated in Al-Urwa. After that, he said, I say. Okay. Ibn Mas'ud's statement, we said, Assalamu alayka ayyuhan nabi, clarifies that the companions, radiallahu anhum, used to say, Assalamu alayka ayyuhan nabi, in tashahud, while the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was alive. But when he died, they ceased to do that. Instead saying, Assalamu ala, as, instead saying, Assalamu ala nabi. Undoubtedly, 
This was with the endorsement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is supported by the fact that Aisha radiallahu anha would similarly teach the, tash the, the tashahud in prayer with Assalamu ala nabi as transmitted by Siraj in his Musnad and Mukhlis in Al-Fawa'id with the two Sahih Isnads from her. Ibn Hajar says, this addition shows clearly that they used to say Assalamu alayka ayyuhan nabi addressing him directly during his life. But when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam died, they stopped addressing him and mentioned him in the third person instead, saying, Assalamu ala nabi He also says in a different place, Subki said in Sharh al Minhaj, after mentioning this narration from Abu Awana only, if this is authentically reported from the Prophet, so if, this, if this is authentically reported from the companions, it proves that after his time, it is not compulsory to address the Prophet وسلم, directly in the greeting of peace. So one says, Assalamu ala nabi. Ibn Hajjad continues, This is authentic without doubt, i.e., because it is established in Sahih al Bukhari. And I have also found strong support for it. Abdul Razak said, Ibn Juraj informed me, Ata informed me that the companions used to say, Assalamu alayna ayyuhan nabi, while the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was alive. But after he died, they would say, Assalamu alayna. And this is a sahih isnad. As for Sa'id ibn Mansur's narration. You, what is Assalamu alayna? You said Assalamu alayna. Hang on a second. Let me just translate myself because there's something here when I'm not happy with your translation. Not yours, but as you're reading from the book. As Subki he said in Sharh al Minhaj, after he mentioned this riwayah of Abu Uwana alone, he said that if this was authentic from the Sahaba, then this will indicate that to say in the Tahiyat as after the Prophet, to say Assalam after the Prophet is not compulsory. So he would have been said, Assalamu ala Nabi. Uh, Ibn Hajar he says, no, but this is authentic. So this is because it's authentic, because it is in Sahih al-Bukhari. And also he said that there is a, another supporter for it, which I found it. Abdul Razak had said, Ibn Juraj, he said, Ata, that he said that the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum, they used to say when the Prophet was alive, Assalamu alayka, ayyuhan nabi. When he died, they said, Assalamu ala nabi. And this is authentic chain. As what is being mentioned from Sa'id ibn Mansur, from the path of Abu Ubaidah ibn Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, uh, from the authority of his father, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, that the Prophet وسلم, he taught them the tashahud and he had mentioned the hadith previously. So he said, Qala ibn Abbas, for verily we used to say, Assalamu alayka ayyuhan nabi, when he was alive. And Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he said, This is what Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, this is what the Prophet وسلم, taught us, and this is how we've been taught. So this shows maybe. That Abdullah ibn Abbas, he was saying it, searching. And Abdullah ibn Mas'ud did not go back to him. But the narration of Abu Ma'mar is more authentic. For Abu Ubaidah did not hear from his father, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. So the isnad to him is anothing. Basically saying, the narration that says Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he said, Assalamu alayka inna ayyuhan nabi, is the one we've been taught, is not authentic. So we stay with the one which is authentic. And that is, we used to say, Assalamu alayka ayyuhan nabi when the Prophet of Allah was alive, but now we say Assalamu ala nabi. Then he says, and this sayings of Al Imam ibn Hajar being carried as well and said by a number of scholars like Al Qastalani, Al Zarqani, Al Laknawi, and others, and they accepted it and they did not comment on it. And that means they are accepting it without any criticism. So it is now we come to the conclusion. After listening to this, we have no doubt to say, and this is absolutely the correct opinion, that the Sahaba, they used to say with the approval of the Prophet Sallallahu Otherwise, if they said, Assalamu ala nabi without an approval, it would become a bid'ah in religion. And Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he is the one who narrated the hadith. 
And the narrator of the hadith, he knows about his narrations more than the others. Not to say as well, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud was known to fight the bid'ah, and he hates it. So he fights the bid'ah and fights the bid'ah in the well-known hadith of Al-Kufa. I'm not going to go into the hadith, the long hadith. But he hates the bid'ah so much that we're going to say that Allah ibn Mas'ud, he made a bid'ah in the hadith that he himself narrates from the Prophet Sallallahu No way. So the authentic way of saying this tashahud is to say, At-Tahiyyatu Lillahi. Now, there is other narrations as well. Was-Salawatu wa-Tayyibat. There's another Tahiyyatu Lillahi, Salawatu Tayyibat. But when you say, As-Salamu Alayka, you say, As-Salamu Ala Nabi. Not, As-Salamu Alayka, Ayyuhan Nabi. And if the person said, As-Salamu Alayka, Ayyuhan Nabi, it does not mean that he is talking about the Prophet of Allah to be alive. No. Probably the Prophet of Allah died. And the Quran said he died. أَفَإِمَّاتَ أَوْ قُتِلْ وَمَا كَانَ مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ And that is Muhammad, he was a بشر مثلكم. That is, he was a, a human being like yourself. أَفَإِمَّاتَ أَوْ قُتِلْ إِنْ قَلَبْتُمْ عَلَىٰ أَعْقَابِكُمْ If it's to be killed or to die, you go back as kuffar. Uh, also, he said, Allah said, فَإِنَّكَ مَيِّتُونَ وَإِنَّهُمْ لَمَيِّتُونَ You are, إِنَّكَ لَمَيِّتُونَ You are going to die, and they are going to be dying as well. So you're going to die. So the Prophet of Allah is dead. So when you say, سَلَامُ عَلَيْكَ أَيُّهَا النَّبِي Sticking to a narration, we are not saying to you that you are assuming that you are saying that the Prophet of Allah is alive. But we say that the correct way of saying the tashahud, according to Aisha and Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, and Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he is the one who rated the best of the ahadith, is assalamu ala nabi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh with the respect of the difference among the scholars who keep saying assalamu alayka ayyuhan nabi طيب. before we go ahead we need to make sure that we have to put some extras there the hadith that you have read said assalamu alayna wa ala ibadillahi salihin peace be upon us okay and upon the righteous slaves of Allah as salihin a salih is the one who is doing what is supposed to do from the fulfillment of the rights of Allah Azza wa Jal and the rights of his servants. So the one who fulfills the rights of Allah, the one who fulfills the rights of the servants of Allah, what is incumbent upon him to do, then he is the salih from the salihun. The Shaykh al-Albani, he puts that in a bracket there. I don't know why the things not being in your book to be translated. But if you say, As-salamu alayna wa ala ibadillahi salihin, but you have actually uh, got every servant who is salih, righteous, in the heavens and in the earth. Do you have that one, Abdullah? Yes, sir. Where is it? It's um, within the translation. But you didn't, you, you didn't say it. So when you said, As-salamu alayna wa ala ibadillahi salihin, you didn't say it in the R. Ah, you said it in the translation, yes? Yeah. Can you read it for me, please? Assalamu alayna wa alayna because I, I didn't hear that in the translation. I didn't hear it. For when one says that, it includes every righteous slave in the heaven and the earth. Right. Okay. So that is the, yes. Every righteous person. So this is a very important addition because it is part of the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. That's why at Tirmidhi al Hakim he says, He who wants to be included into this salutation, which the creation, the servants of Allah, they say it when they pray, the Latin to be a Abd Salih. So if you want to be included in that dua, because every single Muslim when he prays, he says, in his tashawr, Assalamu alayna wa ala ibadillahi salihin. So basically, if you want to be included in that dua, you have to be abdun salih, a righteous slave. Otherwise, you're going to be deprived from this great favor, the great bounty, which is included in the dua of millions of people. Al-Qaffal, rahimahullah, from the scholars, he says in his fatawa, for the person when he abandons and forsakes the prayer and he does not pray, he will harm most of the Muslims, all the Muslims. Because the person when he prays, 
He would say in his prayer, Allahumma ghfir li walil mu'minina wal mu'minat. In his prayer, he would say, Oh Lord, forgive for me and for the believers, males and females. And he also would say in his tashahud, Assalamu alayna wa ala ibadillahi salihin. Peace be upon us and upon the righteous slaves of Allah. So he will be falling short in the rights of Allah the rights of his messenger, the rights of himself, and the rights of all the Muslims, that is why the sin of abandoning the prayer is huge. Because you are leaving all these rights. The rights of Allah, the rights of his messenger, the right of yourself, because you say, and the rights of other righteous Muslims, the other, and all the Muslims, which is, Salihin. Alhamdulillah, now we know the meaning of this, and we come now to the second tashahud, which is tashahud ibn Abbas, by which we'll finish. Tabal. Number two, the tashahud of ibn Abbas, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, used to teach us the tashahud, the way he taught us surahs of the Quran. So again, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he says that, to emphasize, that you to teach them the tashahud, like he used to teach them the Quran. He used to say, and in another narration, All compliments, blessed words, prayers, pure words are due to Allah. Peace be on you, O Prophet, and also the mercy of Allah and His blessings. Peace be on us and on the righteous slaves of Allah. I bear witness that none has a right to be worshipped except Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, and in the other narration, is his slave and the messenger. Right. Okay, and now he says there, there's something there. Footnote. Imam al Nawi. You don't read that? No, no, there's no Imam Nawi here. Okay, and now he says that is Al Mubarakat was Salawatu Tayyibat as in the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud and others. But the wow is being taken instead of was Tayyibat, it's Al Tayyibat. And this is uh, allowed in the Lugha, in the language. Right. So you could say At Tahiyatu Al Mubarakatu Salawatu Wat Tayyibat, At Tayyibat or Wat Tayyibat Lillah. Then Assalamu alayka or Salamun alayka yuhan nabi. You could say that as well. Because the hadith is being mentioned by as-salam or salam. So you could just say it without the al, salam. <coughs> but the best to say it with the al because the, most of the hadith um, is uh, actually on the l, as-salam, not salam. And also which is synchronized with the salutation at the end of the prayer. <coughs> Bye. You've noticed here in the two tashahud, and we're going to continue, inshallah, next week, that here the Prophet of Allah said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah, or in another narration, Abduhu wa Rasulullah. I don't know if it was not mentioned with you, Abdullah. Do you find that? Or another narration, Abduhu wa Rasul. You have that one? Abduhu wa Rasul. In Ibn Abbas tashahud, yes? At the end. It is a. Yeah. Ashhadu Muhammad Rasulullah, wa in another narration, Abduhu wa Rasul. It's very important. This is, um, by the way, this is like, uh, if I want to go into this term, Ashadu Allah ilallah Muhammad Rasulullah, that's about three, four lectures. But I, it's very important to emphasize the following fact. That the Prophet Sallallahu he called himself what? Abd. Just like other people are Abd. Abd means a servant. And that is why Allah he said to his Prophet, Qul innama ana basharun mithlukum. Say, to say that at the end of Surah al you I am just a human like you are, but the difference that I, revelation comes to me. Also, the Prophet he said, I am a human being like you. So if I forget, like you, so I forget, like you forget. So if you, if I forget, then remind me. So the Prophet said, I do forget. And this hadith is Sayyid Bukhari Muslim. So the Prophet. Basically, he's a human being. 
And also he said in the hadith, لا تطروني كما أطرت النصر المسيح ابن مريم ولكن قولوا عبد الله ورسوله. And this hadith also is sahih uh, in Muslim and Ahmad. Where the Prophet Allah said, do not praise me like the Christians had praised Isa, the son of Maryam. Overly, I am the slave of Allah and his messenger. So it's not permissible for a Muslim who is testifying this testimony to make the Prophet Sallallahu above what he had put himself, above what Allah put him, and Allah is pleased with him like this. So do not put him above that level, something that Allah was not going to be pleased with. So he said, Ana Muhammad ibn Abdullah, Abdullahi wa Rasuluh. Prophet he said, Ubarili, I am the Prophet of Allah, Muhammad ibn Abdullah. And this is Muslim ibn Ahmad. I'm the son of Abdullah. And Abdullah, and also the slave, slave of Allah, servant of Allah and his messenger. By Allah. ما أحب أن ترفعوني فوق منزلة التي أنزلني الله إلى. I don't want you, I don't like you to elevate me above the rank which Allah Azza wa Jal had put me into it. So we should not praise the Prophet except for what Allah praised him with, or with what is authentic Sunnah is being established to praise him, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. As for that praise that we find in the Sufi. Poetry, which they say, فَإِنَّ مِنْ جُودِكَ الدُّنْيَا وَضَرَّتَهَا وَإِنَّ مِنْ عُلُومِكَ عِلْمُ اللَّوْحِ وَالْقَلَمِ From your from your generosity is the whole dunya, and even the one which is opposite to it, and from your knowledge is the knowledge of the knowledge of the prescribed tablet, preserved tablet, and the knowledge of the لوح اللوح is the لوح المحفوظ والقلم. So this saying it it negates the shahada, the testimony. To say that he is a servant. Okay? So, and he himself been asked by the Almighty in the Quran to say to the people, Well, I'm going to A'lam al Ghayr. If I, if, I, if, I, if I know the Ghayr, if I was a person to know what is the unseen, I would have asked for more good. And not, no harm will touch me. He is the one who said to the girl, uh, to that Jariya, the woman, she was striking the doof when the Prophet ﷺ came from the day of Badr. Okay? Uh, and when the Prophet ﷺ was victorious, and this lady, she was making the, this girl, and she was making the doof, and she was making the sheet, in which she was uh, dispraising or criticizing those people who were being killed from the kuffar. Then she said, وَفِينَا نَبِيٌّ يَعْلَمُ مَا فِي غَدِي and amongst us, there is a prophet who knows what is in tomorrow. He said, no, don't say that. Say what you've been saying before. That's why Umm al-Mu'mineen Aisha radiallahu anha, she said in the hadith which is mentioned in Sahih Bukhari and Muslim, he who says to you that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to know what is in tomorrow, then he had made a big lie against Allah azza wa jal. So this is very important for us to know that the Prophet of Allah has got no knowledge of the preserved tablet. And the Prophet of Allah warned us to go extreme. La gulu. So you have no gulu. Gulu means what? To go overboard. We're not allowed to go overboard when we praise the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Iyakum al gulu. Be careful in gulu. Nadarishin, Iyakum al gulu wa fiddin. Be aware to go extreme overboard in religion. فَإِنَّمَا أَهْلَكَ الدِّينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ غُلُوُّهُمْ فِي دِينِهِمْ فَإِنَّمَا أَهْلَكَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ For what had destroyed the ones before you is that they were extreme and going overboard in their religion. As the second character here, we find that he was a prophet, messenger. Allah chose him and he had uh, specified him, designated him with the wahi. And he told him some of the ghaib, which is not the absolute ghaib. Okay? Uh, and that is, we should believe in everything that the Prophet ﷺ told us. What is being narrated to us authentically from the Prophet of Allah, we should believe in him. We should believe in everything. Whether it is going to be suitable to our intellect or not. We can't really subjugate and submit everything to the aql. We accept whatever is called the aql. No. There are things we don't know about, like the grave punishment. 
Yes, we are so much in aqilat, but you could really accept it. It's acceptable. But it is from the ghayb who should submit. You're not going to believe in Allah Azza wa Jal unless you make the Prophet Sallallahu an arbitrator in everything. You make the Prophet of Allah is your guider, the one who guides you to the deen wal haqq. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam. By this, alhamdulillah, we come to the end of the class. We've got only about 12 minutes for questions and answers. Please go ahead. The priority goes to Brixton people. Please uh, uh, focus on the Salah, more than anything else, Jazakumullah khair. Fadl. Okay, um, people from Brixton, can you please raise your hands? On the, on the panel, I have a few from Brixton, Chef. Can I start with those? You can, please. Okay. Um, so it's on the Salah. Um, you said we should say the regular adhkar in sujood sahu, but do we say rabbi ghfilli uh, between the sujood? No, we said that. No, before I think being asked this question before. No, we don't. Okay, um, sister's asking if uh, Brixton again, if I mistakenly add an extra raka'ah, for example, I pray five raka'ah for Dhuhr and I realize it is only after I have already fully stood up for the fifth raka'ah, what should I do? If you stood up for the fifth raka'ah, you sit down, you don't continue. Okay, so even if you are in the ruku'ah, you don't complete the raka'ah, you sit down, the raka'ah is cancelled now. Okay, uh, Abu Ubaidillah. Um, let me just see. Can they unmute themselves, Sheikh? Okay, let me just make them unmute themselves. Okay, hang on. Okay. Yes, you're able to unmute yourselves. Yeah, no, yeah, Sheikh. No. No, Sheikh. I was going to ask you, said, um, if you were to, uh, with regards to this Sajid uh, Sal, the ones you explained, uh, I understand it to be that is if you um, uh, make a deduction in your solar. So what about if you go beyond the raka you're supposed to pray? How do you make compensation for that? Because there's some narration that says that you make, uh, uh, after the teslim, you make two sajda. Uh, please, uh, can you play, clarify that, Sheikh? Thank you, you're on mute again. It's going to make me crazy, this jabra. <laughs> Allah must on this, these machines. Um, Basically, that the Prophet ﷺ's ahadith, some of them they say that he had made two sajda before salutation. And in other narrations, he made two sajda after salutation, and then he made another salutation. But the unauthentic one, which is that he made salutation, then he made two sajda, and then he made two shahad again, and then salutation. That is not authentic, which is the Hanafi way, which is they make okay tashahud again no so either you make two sajda before salutation after you make tashahud two sajda then salutation or tashahud salutation then two sajda then straight away salutation now that's in general so you could do it like this way or that way but when we look and this is the amongst the difference uh, controversial amongst the scholars if we look where the prophet of allah made the Sujood al sahu before salutation and where he made it after salutation. Then we could really arrive to a more precision to the sunnah. So you want to really hit the sunnah, this is the way. But the Shaykh al Albani said, if it's too much for you to learn, whether you make it before or after, as long as you made it Sujood al sahu And that is, when we have two things here, we always make the sujood, the two sajd of sahu, before salutation. Other than these two things, then it's after salutation. What are these two things? One, that is you forgot your middle tashahud, your first tashahud, and you stood up completely. If you did not stand up completely and you sat down, there's no sujood sahu, as we said. You stood up completely, then the hadith, and the ahadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that he made sujood al sahu before salutation. So that's the first case. Second thing, or the second case, is that if you prayed, and then you forgot how many raka, and you investigated, but you did not arrive. 
So you are now, actually you are in the third. You are actually in the third. But you're not sure, are you in the fourth? So this is three or four, three or four, three or four. I'm not sure it's four or three. Then you build upon the least, which you are sure of. That's three. Even though you're correct, but you don't know. So you build upon the minimum, which you are sure of. Let's say that you are in the fourth, but you forgot. Is it the third or the fourth? You are three, four, three, four, three, or three. I'm not sure. You go to the three because you're sure of the three. Again, in this case, because you forgot and you did not arrive to a conclusion, then your sujood, as sahu, the two sajda, is before salvation. Other than that, the two sajda will be after salutation, but remember to have another salutation after the two sajda. So, tashahud, salutation, two sajda, and then salutation. Other than the two cases. I repeat the cases again. If you forgot the middle tashahud, the first tashahud you stood up completely. Second one, if you forgot how many rakas you have made and you did not arrive to a conclusion, you build upon what, uh, you, you disregard the one which is your in that of, you build upon the minimum number, so three or four, three or four, you say three, khalas. I'm not sure about, I prayed my third, so I'm going to be, khalas, this is the third. And then you obey the, the two, the two, two, two such that before salutation. So if I ask a question now to you, Abu Ubaidillah, Brixton, this person, he had prayed his asr. Okay. And when he prayed his asr in the second, in the first shahud, he made salutation. And then he sat down. Then he remembered. Oh, I made only two rakah. Or somebody told him. Or maybe he had CCTV camera. He was looking. Oh, I prayed two rakah actually. What he should do? Get up, Allahu Akbar, and make another two rakah. Five. Where does he make sujood as sahwa? Ya Abu, ya Allah, Abu Abdullah. Before salutation or after? Before salutation, Sheikh. Why? Before salutation. Why before? Is is before salutation because um, um, the mistakes are within the four rakahs that is meant to make. He's just been told that he's done two rakah, so he stood up now to complete the next two rakah that is missing. So he's still with being before, so he needs to make this uh, side. Abu down. Abdullah, which case is this? I've mentioned two cases. Be, be, you mentioned, uh, yeah, this is uh, uh, Sajida um, before salutation. But I mentioned two cases. I mean, what is the case here? Case number one, you forgot the middle tashahud. Did he forget the middle tashahud here? The first tashahud? Did he forget when, when he had made salutation? Did he forget the middle tashahud? No. No, he no. didn't. He didn't. Second one, he was in doubt. Was he in doubt? It wasn't in doubt. It wasn't. No, he wasn't in doubt. He finished. Yes. He thought it was two rakah. Yes, that's he correct. Yeah. Out. <laughs> so where is this to do such that now? Before or after? After, inshallah. <laughs> it has to be the two cases. Right. Let's ask one of those people who will put his hands up. Bilal yeah. Nakhla. So, Sheikh, there's a sister from Brixton that I was just going to ask. She, one of the first ones to ask the question. It's a quick one anyway. Can the two sunnah prayer after Maghrib I'm going to I'm, I'm gonna ask a question my, myself. <laughs> Sorry? I'm going with this question. I'm teaching the students. Hang on a second. Okay. Bilal Nakhla. I'm going to ask you the question. I'm going to ask you the question. This is not for you to question me. I'm going to question you. Okay. This person is in his prayer. He forgot. Is he in the third? Or the fourth. He was actually no. in the third. No. He forgot. So he said to himself, three or four, three or four, three or four. Ah, let me tell I first rakah I prayed Qulhu Allahu Ahad. Second rakah I prayed with Qul Awdu Rabbil Falak. Yes, actually, I have prayed my third. So this is my fourth. And he was correct because he just arrived to the conclusion that he prayed his third. Because I remember making the tashahud, 
And I remember now, uh, 100%. I'm not, I've got no doubt, khalas. And he was actually correct. So he was, he's supposed to be praying the fourth. But he thought maybe he's to pray the third. So I arrived to the right conclusion, but he had a doubt. No. What is supposed to do? A, nothing. B, two sajda before salutation. C, two sajda after salutation. A or B or C? A, nothing. Okay. Mute yourself. Mute yourself. <laughs> Anybody would like to answer this question? Baba ya Abdullah. Yalla ya Abdullah. No, 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 no. Abdullah. Baba ya Abdullah. Before the taslim? Before the taslim. Anybody else? B. B, Sheikh. B, Sheikh. Who says B? Put his hands up. Abu <laughs> Ubaidah. Who says, who says A puts his arm up? Nothing. I say A, Sheikh. Nothing. Who says C? Sheikh, C. C, Sheikh. Who says C? This is no, Fazal, C. C, Fazal. Fazal. And who else? Abdullah 105, Sheikh. Yeah, Abdullah 105 and Faisal are the correct one. C. Ya Ikhwani, I said to you, Wallah, I made it easy, so much easy for you. Still, the only two cases where there is huh, sujood as saho to sajda is before salutation. That is, if you forgot your middle tashahad, you stood up completely. If you did not stood up completely, you sit down and there's no sajda. This is the only up, uh, situation where you forget something and no sujood saho. And that is, when you forget and you are halfway, not fully up, and you sit down. No, because the Prophet of Allah said no sujood saho. But in other cases, he said, Ala kulli sahwin sajdatan. And every time that you forget, there is two sajda. So in every time you forget, there is two sajda. Except in that place, where you forgot the middle tashahud, or the first tashahud, and you do not completely sit, standing up, sit down, and no sajda suhu. Sujood sahu. So you have to make sujood sahu. So A is not right. But it is not from the second case. The second case, he said, you are in doubt. But you did not arrive to the conclusion. So you build upon what is the least. Here you forgot and you investigated and you arrived to the right conclusion. You are not in doubt anymore. So you, you pray the two such as saho after salutation, not before Allah Ta'ala Alam, by which we're going to stop here. All the questions that I apologize for the sisters will be inshallah dealt with in tomorrow's class. Tomorrow's class is Al Arbi'a. Uh, which is about divorce uh, that is the elderly class so please be there jazakumullahu khayran which is going to be talking about the khul' bi'idhni Allah al-khul' tomorrow subhanakallahu bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik